Welcome or welcome back to the Lockwood Chronicles. Today we are going through my April, my April TBR. <laughs> the temperatures are finally warming up. However, I'm still a freeze baby and my house is still freezing. So I was gonna have an iced chai tea latte today, but I was so cold that I had to go with the tried and true hot chai tea latte. It's sunny. It's gonna be, I think, a high of 47 today. We're here to discuss my April TBR. I have been reading a lot of books for myself in a month for someone that also works a different job, like is involved in way too many <laughs> athletic activities as well as trying to have a social life outside of those two. And I have been reading a lot and as much as I love reading I can feel myself heading into more of a burnout. I just love reading so much and I obviously have so many books to get through that I just want to read them all simultaneously and quickly in order to give you guys a lot of different options and opinions on what my thoughts are but I have a lot of things coming up this spring and so I'm going to try to not read as many books. But we'll see what happens. I love reading. I love reading for the escapism of it. Also doing some like extra stuff, like learning brain things. So that's gonna take up a little bit of my time too. Five books on my TBR. My goal every month is just four books, one book a week. Let's get into what I'm actually gonna read, hopefully, in April. I'm going to start off with the series that I want to continue reading and <laughs> I'm going to hopefully read Francesca's story of the Bridgerton series when he was wicked. I read this so, like the other ones, too quickly, too close together. I burned out so hard. And when I found out that Benedict's story isn't coming next, I was really, really sad. So this is Francesca's story. She doesn't really get a lot of airtime and a lot of people forget about her, including her mother. So I am hopefully going to finish the last three books this spring because it's such a spring like book series and it it makes me excited and it's got that gossip girl aspect to it so that's always fun yeah but i only have three books left and i've heard the last two are amazing so hopefully francesca's is also good because i am interested in seeing what she has because her story sounds really good the next series i want to continue reading <laughs> there she be right there. We're on Air of Fire for Sarah J Maas in the Throne of Glass series. I hear this is where big things happen, lots of things change, the romance aspect. Like this is I think where people say they get hooked the most is Air of Fire. I could be wrong. We don't know because I haven't read it yet. But I am so excited. It's where the books are starting to get chunkier. And when they get chunky, you know things are going on and it's very exciting. I also checked out the audiobook. It should be available soon because if I'm really into this, I will 100,010% want to listen to it on my commute because my commute is so long. Not that I want to speed through it, but I get obsessed. Next up is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is at the age of 29. Hannah Martin still has no idea what she wants to do with her life. Girl, same. Uh, she has lived in six different cities and has held countless meaningless jobs since college, but on the heels of a disastrous breakup, she has finally returned to her hometown of Los Angeles. It's so weird when people are actually like their hometown is Los Angeles. That's weird to me because so many people just move there. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. To celebrate her first night back, her best friend Gabby takes Hannah out to a bar where she bumps into her high school boyfriend, Ethan. It's just past midnight when Gabby asks Hannah if she's ready to go. Ethan quickly offers to give her a ride later if she wants to stay. Hannah hesitates. What happens if she leaves with Gabby? What happens if she leaves with Ethan? In concurrent storylines, Hannah lives out the effects of each decision. Quickly, these parallel universes develop into surprisingly different stories with far-reaching consequences for Hannah and the people around her, raising questions including, is anything meant to be? How much in our lives is determined by chance? And perhaps most compellingly, is there such a thing as a soulmate? Hannah believes there is, and in both worlds, she's believed she's found him. And I just, I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm excited to get through her back catalog. And I've heard really good things about this. I heard that the concurrent storylines has done really well. 
So we're going to find out together or separately, you know, you'll find out through me and make your own choices. Next up for an author that I'm trying to get through their back catalog is Colleen Hoover's Reminders of him. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out, no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this. I feel like Colleen Hoover is such a polarizing author. So I'm gonna find out. One of my goals this year is to reread some of my favorite books and annotate the heck out of them. Uh, I did that with Daisy Jones and the Six mainly because the show is coming out and I absolutely love, 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 love that book. But Emily Henry has such a special place in my top tier book author heart. And I really want to go back and reread her three novels so far. <laughs> because Happy Place is coming out too, I'm so excited. I wanna go back and reread and really annotate heavily in her books. I was gonna say albums. So this month is Beat Read by Emily Henry. And I've annotated a little bit when I was first starting to start to tab, but I wanna go and underline, highlight, note the margins, all of it. I will say Beat Read is my least favorite out of the three. People We Meet on Vacation is top tier for me because I love a friends to lovers. I loved this book. <laughs> so it's not that I didn't like it. I just really, really love People We Made On Vacation, Book Lovers Come Second, and Be Treated Thirst. Third, third, thirst. <laughs> I am excited to see what Happy Place brings to the table. I am really upset that it's in a hardback and not the size of these. Why would they do that? Why would they do that to us? Yeah, I want to go in and annotate Beach Read heavily and with love because I love it. And it's also like kind of takes place in the winter, winter, summer, it's change of season. So I feel like it's a good time of the year to read it. So with that being said, oh shoot, I didn't pick a book club pick. Oh no. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, well, <laughs> you're gonna have to wait till the wrap up for me to decide with book club because I also don't know what's coming out on book of the month yet. Stand by. You'll have to tune in to the the wrap up, my March wrap up to find out what, what we're reading for book club this month. <laughs> really dropped the ball on that one guys, sorry. All right, well so far these are the five books that I'm planning to read in April plus whatever we read for book club. If you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my bookish content, and respect others, respect yourself, and do something amazing with your day. Thanks, bye! <laughs>